Bet Boom. See whether or not Bet Boom is able to make the adjustments after Talon gave us quite a new hope, it seems, in play style. They managed to, damn. Yeah, that was me. That was you. They managed to put together a fast lineup for once, which Talon seemingly never do. That lineup honestly wasn't even that fast. They just played it fast. Even better? Yeah, that's what I think. Like yeah, even that's more better. impressive. Because right. uh, it's not like they had some like a lone druid or bristle back, and they're just like, oh, uh, obviously they're just going to run at you. Sure. I think it's one of those deceptive ones where when we look at it, you can see where the timing pushes come from, but I don't think anybody was expecting it in that game. I certainly wasn't. I definitely wasn't. So, bet boom. We'll see how they adjust to that bit of aggression from Talon. What do you feel draft-wise? Seemed like the panel quite liked it. The adjustments they've made, the silencer pickup, Guardian the Pango. We've got uh, the still the same old classic of Doom techies. This does feel like a game where if bet boom can play their usual style and get Nightfall to his items, that it seems pretty straightforward. Because I think Global plus the Doom plus the Chrono are pretty hard spells for Talon to deal with. Like, they're re all really nice for Darkseer. He just struggles against the constant purge, the time dilation. Chrono, there's no save here for Talon. There isn't a lot to displace the Doom going in like they had last time with the Panda and the Global and the Marana ulti. So I feel like Vet Boom are in a better place here than they were last time. And it's kind of on Talon to, to make their mark. And, I mean, it's a double melee support Darkseer line. That is yep. some good old caveman Dota at the core of it. Maybe a slower version with the, the Elder Titan Spear Breaker scale, which is something that they can maybe rely on, but still going to want to run at Bet Boom a bit, especially their supports. If you can start getting some charge shell kills, some, some good stomps in the fight, clump them up. I mean, you do have vacuum combos here. Like you can vacuum yep. into the charge, you can vacuum into the Earth Splitter. There's some decent impact, and of course, Morphling can always steal Faces Void and return a time dilation towards Bet Boom, which looks pretty damn good as well. Yeah, a lot of interesting interactions this game. That's a really nice counter that Morphling has against Faceless Void and some of those longer drawn out fights. What'd you make of their opener, by the way, for Talon? The fact that they would open with Ember, follow up a uh, pick of Morphling? I feel like it's okay from first pick if you're confident enough in it. And I think they got away with it, honestly. Like, somehow they first picked Ember and he ended up in a Pango lane. Which baffles me. But the Pango does have his uses at other factors in this game. In terms of the Morphling matchup, getting in there with the spell, spell immunity roll that there's not a lot of answers for. So I understand why they wanted the Pango, but I do think it feels really bad to have ended up with a disadvantageous lane. You're giving Ember a free game here. Yeah, Makoto is already pick Ember. It's already pushing it. He's 14 and 2. 15 and 2. This guy's way ahead in CS compared to everybody else. So if I'm talent, I feel like I got away with that opener. Okay. Like, I got more than what I wanted out of it. And then you get some good cool support picks later, you know, like the breaker and the Elder Titan. You can see a lot more, be a lot more confident in what they're gonna provide you. A little double stomp. This is still the level two though. This is where these trades are difficult. But he's Ollie's doing a pretty damn good job. Slane's also sometimes a rough Elder Titan lane because Morphling doesn't provide you a lot in the early waves. Q will TP out. Guess knowing there's no bash. Pretty quiet game kills wise, but Talon are pulling ahead and all their lane matches by a very small margin. Which bodes well for them, going into that aggressive mid game they're looking for with the Dark Seer and the charges. One point I do notice about the, the both the melee supports don't interact with techies particularly well. The oh, taser oh, will dispel off your, your damage as Elder Titan. Same goes with uh, Q, not really interacting with them. Melee heroes in general, just the minds. I feel like there, this could be a really successful game for him. Those look like a pretty solid techies game. Also, just save has looked like a beast on this hero. In a lot of the, the tournament, I put this right behind his Pugna in terms of reliable impact you're going to get. They're rolling on the hero. Backing back in with the charge. No that leap. is enough for the kill. Great kill to get. They're going to trade off even as uh, Toronto Tokyo. Okay. Are they going to trade off? Man, I really thought Jabs would have been able to run that one down, but Toronto Tokyo, he stays live. Oh, the cliff. cliff. Little the bit burn. of Ion Shell damage. Lose sight of him, though. Jabs, he can pop the Ion Shell on himself now. Charge is coming out. He sees him. 
This was an overextension. Yeah, big overextension. Even cops the tower hit on his way in. Now the Spirit Breaker will probably get the kill. So he'll be able to avenge his own life here. Jabs walking back ogre into stun? it. Ugh. There was no ogre stun. Ah, he tried to go for the neutrals to deny himself instead, but... Uh, I mean, the nice thing is the Glaze were up for Toronto Tokyo, though, so he got in off both those kills. Yeah, great. Some good extra value. I don't think Nightfall's too sad about that exchange overall. Comes back, gets the big core kill, boosts his net worth back up to a very solid spot. Of course, he is rushing the Midas, so you probably expect to die once in this lane if you're doing this type of build. I think it's pretty hard not to at some point just get vacked after a leap. Still was very close to being disaster. Yeah, I mean, Q got a lot off this. He got the solo XP on, or he got the, the kill first. He got the kill on the return that was the solo XP on Toronto Tokyo after all that XP got pushed into him. So he got decent levels out of that exchange where he was suffering earlier, and now he's on a fast phase boots rush. I wouldn't be surprised to see him gank some other lanes and he will instantly TV bottom and look for this. Charge is going to bump into Pure too, so they might be able to go for the second kill with the Ion Shell on him. I think they got him. Pure surrounded by heroes. They did not expect this fast move from Talon. Once again, upsetting Bet Boom with just raw speed. This is how you punish the Doom. Do not let him get these free Devour points. And the Spear Breaker, you can shell him, he can TP, he can charge. A lot of extra early damage you might not expect. Level 4 already for Q. Phase Boot's close. He's having a great game on the Breaker. Also a hero that I go back to, like, this hero was a first phase pick, and then he just fell off out of nowhere. I still think he's pretty damn good. Yeah, same. And every game we see him, it seems like he has solid impact. Playing for the power rune. Spirit Breaker drawing some attention here. Makoto gets up to the high ground just in time. GPK is going to have to go the long route around. Flame Guard is back up for Makoto. And he can use that to protect against a lot of the magic damage. The physical damage almost killed him, and he does actually tick out. Damn. Looks like the flame card ran out, and the curse finished him off. And Toronto Tokyo got the in because he got the last hit. Yeah. Should have died to the centaur. Guess he was so. trying to help you out. Is that so, huh? Yeah, and Tar came over. Bro, you're going to die to the silencer. Yeah, he saw a friend in need. He lended a hand. Deep chase for 23. I'm surprised he went for that. This is boots on no boots right here. Get the dice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That feels good. Radiant Wisdom Austin. runes, though. This does not feel good. As both are going to go to that boot. now. Those are some big runes to miss out here for Talon, who want yeah. their support levels to be able to play through the darks here. Just gonna have to make him up off the kills now. Rare misstep, I think. Yep. Now it's gonna shift more onus back towards Makoto to create some kills, create some openings, get his supports back in the game in terms of experience as Bet Boom pull ahead. And nobody is touching Nightfall anymore. He has had free reign on this lane, pushing towards the Midas after the treads. So it didn't go pure greed, but. This will be a double Midas lineup for Bet Boom, as I think Pure always secures that for himself. Charge in from behind. The Elder Titan is going to be a bit lagging here. So if they want this kill, they're going to have to dive for it. The Stomp does land. It's too tanky with Vanguard. Uh, guess so. Man, the Stomper will not leave Makoto alone. Blast off. Is that going to land? Oh, he had a Spirit up. Cause him to take some more curse damage, but that illusion rune was what he really wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to certainly. deal with all these dots. No leap for five. And that's nice enough. kill. What a great bash. Oh, that's some significant burst. I thought he was going to be able to get a leap off there. But I guess already level three shell up for jabs. And they managed to get him with the stomp. 23 is going to turn into the doom. Hit him with the centaur stun that he had. Gets hit back with the centaur stun, but he still has waveform. Doesn't need it, though. Saves his mana for another day. 23 having another pretty decent start here versus the pure doom. Pure does not like what he sees, which is 23 getting ahead of him. This guy's I should be the richest core on the map. Instead, the Morphling is devouring creeps and pulling ahead here, and he's just going yep. first item Lincolns. That is going to be a strong Lincolns in this game. There is not a lot that breaks it. 
actually basically nothing outside of like a last word or something, which is, I mean, good luck. The ward will see the gate goers. There's nothing they can do about it. What you have to be careful here of your talent is the, the, the windows for you to get aggressive are going to open up. You're going to have the levels on the supports. You're going to have the ion shell that's going to make you want to run it. Bet boom here. You do not want to just run into Chronosphere and give Nightfall really good turnarounds. We've seen him pop off on the face of Void in terms of even from a behind position, finding great Chronos. I go back to that five-man Chrono he found against oh, LG. Yeah. That was a sick one. Like, if you clump in deep with the Darks here, this is where Nightfall can find that easy punish. Even if he doesn't have the damage, It'll slow down the fight. He'll get a great time dilation off, and his team can likely turn it around. Yeah, get a good blast off afterwards. So controlled aggression is the name of the game. This looks fairly well, controlled. going to be used. Great blast off. GBK barely gets off the Rolling Thunder in time, but Kodo's going to be slowed down to a crawl. He's going to survive, but so does GPK. And he will secure a rune for his troubles. What need have I and Makoto. He is having trouble. Playing in Toronto, Tokyo here. Silencer is just not giving him any freedom in these fights. Yeah, and they keep on making these moves of aggression around the power rune spawning too, so it's not even like he's able to get a power rune and then use that to go into one of the side lanes. This man hasn't seen a power rune for days. Nope. Back towards top, Talon Go. The siding Nightfall has lingered up here long enough. His tower is still half HP. It's really nice for Pep Boom. They can potentially anchor this, get a good fight out here with Chrono. If Nightfall wants to stay around, they have TPs. So let's start chipping away. Yeah, get on top of him, force the time lock. Now get the charge in. He can pop the, uh, okay, he had to use the Chrono Spear there. Not what he wanted out of that, but better than dying. Sure. And that'll secure the tower for 23, who went through the gate and will clean up that last hit. Pushing him even farther ahead. This is going to be a really fast Lincoln Sphere. It's going to make him a beast. Especially in these early fights where you don't have the items to help break that Lincoln's. Yeah, if he turns into the Faceless Void, like time walks in, time dilations, and you have a Lincoln's to protect that, that seems really good to me. Charge on to Toronto, Tokyo. And Nightfall can't do anything to stop this. Honestly, he should. Uh, I'm not even sure if he should get close to this engagement. Look at this rotation. Spearbreaker goes bottom with the Ion Shell to kind of clean up some of the creeps pushing in, get his level six. Very efficient. That boom just relegated the city behind their tier one mid. Don't really have any openings. Trying to get this defusal up on GPK. That'll be time to go find the fights. But for now, they're just on the back foot. Don't have global for one. Oh, he slept them, but he got the bottle refill. Arcane Rune. Makoto finally knows what a power rune looks like. And yeah, that's a good one. Very good one. But the defusal finishes for GPK and the smoke is instantly out. Gets scanned, however. So Talon once more reading bet boom like a bet book, one might say. And they should find nothing here. Smoke breaks. He already morphed into strength. But can they still get this? This is a lot of heroes. Earth Splitter's gonna come out. They're gonna guard him. They do have the wall, plus the charge on through. A lot of damage. 23, waveforming away. And the more strength looks to be good for now. Toronto Tokyo just mids, but he's not gonna make it. Meanwhile, Makoto is demolishing the back line thanks to Q and Jab, setting it all up for him. Another strike, an instant bash, a vacuum in, and he's controlled up for too long. Four dead, nothing lost. Talent. Reading him like a bet book indeed, Avery. Dragon Nightfall back at the end of that as well. Remember, there was no Chrono for that fight because of his escape earlier. That's yep. where the aggression pays off because you, you surely get the morph kill here if you have that ult up. Instead, Talon gets to turn it around. 23 does a good job baiting this fight out on that high ground ward. That is why he gets morph off the vision paying off here in strides. And then you just get to clean him up with the shells, the charges, the slights. That is where this quad melee lineup shines. Once your ults are gone, you're going to get run down like dogs. Yep. And uh, Bet Boom are going to have to rethink how they want to take team fights from here on out. It's looking like they may have to just focus on Chronosphere fights. Which isn't the best either because their lineup doesn't throw damage into the Chronosphere super well. Now, Chrono's just like buying time for the other 
materials to set their own spells up or maybe disjoint the fight a bit. Yeah. But it's not it's not anything to, to write home about. And it's pretty much just dependent on Nightfall's damage and his farm, which is getting really slowed down when he joins these fights and dies in them and gets nothing. And this might be a solo kill. It is indeed. He gets a bash for the last hit. Didn't even have a shell. Q just showing up in these last two games, man. Yeah. And that is a player for town that we at least felt was like their driving force in a lot of the CDPC this year. Mm -hmm. Particularly the driving force at Lima when they got that top three. And then his hero pool kind of disappeared with the patch. He's had to refine it. If he gets back online, that's one of the aspects that makes Talon very scary, where he is just controlling the map, controlling the initiations, and determining where and when Talon are fighting. I think that's when they're at the best. And that's probably why there's been so much pressure on Makoto lately. So we're going to watch with the Global Silence, then get the pick off on 23. So good kill. Sneaky positioning there from Bet Boom. That's and a much incredibly pick off. sneaky kill. Surprised they had the burst for that. Man, these two supports are tanky. They don't go down easy. They won't go down at all. They'll be the ones to take Toronto Tokyo down instead as the blood grenade slows him down. He'll kill him, kill his little ward too. Trapped him in a corner. Very big pickup on the morph, especially when he already has that Lincoln's out. You're not gonna find too many of those openings on 23 in this game. So you gotta make them count. Chrono back up for Nightfall. But how easy is it to use aggressively? Like, can you just Chrono 23 and kill him here? Do you have the damage? Ooh, they were thinking about it. I like the fact that the after 23 got picked off like that, like Makoto and now Q creating, like, they're frontlining for him, seeing what's going on. The Doom used defensively here, but I think he's still dead. It's gonna be close. Need a bash. Closing in on the tier no twos. Bash. The ion shell, the bash. Not needed, apparently. The ion shell will do the damage. Nice blast off, though. A beautiful one from Stay. Dropping the mines all around. Kills them all, though. Chronosphere oh, locking down beauty. two heroes. That's a beauty. They might be able to kill the darks here. Actually, 23's coming in with double damage. That is scary. Bet boom. They got to get out of here, I think. Makoto has a pretty free game now that the Doom is cool down, and you do not want to fight a double damage Morphling. Didn't Makoto start that fight with haste that got purged off? So yeah. they had a haste going in and a DD at the end. That is too much to deal with for sure. Those are the Kronos Bet Boom are looking for, though. Overall, a decent team fight for them because they get their faces void involved. He gets gold and he gets out. I mean, sure, you're losing pure here, but he was basically gone no matter what. So the turnaround, very successful. Your tower does die, but that was an inevitability as well. It's just a matter of how much you can get out during this period, and you get a decent amount. 23 also doesn't really get anything off joining this, this skirmish, so it's just yeah. wasted time for him. He kills the techies, but then he instantly gets disarmed. It's pretty sad. But Chronosphere is now on cooldown. So it's open season for fights now. <laughs> All right. Nowhere to farm for Nightfall, and that is what the Spear Breaker can provide you. The second you see somebody, you give them zero space, just run them down. Continue the train. Tower He's going to be a big train. Level 10 already. The big old caboose. He's going to have a BKB here in this game as he is mega farmed compared to the two supports from Bet Boom and particularly save. He's so poor. What happened to him? Yeah. Look at Q. All over the map. Attack. What does that one look like to you? Uh, Like a hammer that's falling down i saw a palm tree oh well yeah, i could kind of see that one well a palm tree and what what was on the right Dyer's hand side tower is under oh, dead body oh that sounds like miami yeah i was thinking bali oh uh oh <laughs> are we going there yeah see he's in a coffin <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> man even even when you think of nice images it's paired up with death 4,000 net worth lead for Talon, 16 to 6. Radiance courier has been killed. Bring oh, Makoto's courier. Oh, that's Pretty nice. Decent. He's looking for a Yule Scepter, by the way. Let's find there for the Void Stone. So an interesting early Yule's pickup for the mid Ember. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff to deal with, I guess. Yeah, definitely helps with all the silencer dots that were annoying him earlier. 
Might also be able to like Yule's dodge a Doom Initiation either on him or yourself. Time dilation. Time dilation, well. yeah. So it's a decent utility Yule's game. You but you wonder it. if Talon want him going Yule's in a way? Like, would you rather just have a BKB Ember in a heavier scale? Well, did they want Q to be going Dagon? That is probably true, yeah. But he did, because he's a Chad. Hell yeah. You ain't le Oh, never mind the hurricane. You are leaving. You are getting uh, to run a little bit. Cost him a little bit more time. Couldn't use the D Midas, though. That's sad. Big mistake from Pure here. Not dying on an active neutral camp. Mm. You can also use the Yules offensively. Uh, gets rid of Shield Crash, but also can, like, Stop the techies mid blast off. That's a cool use of it. Yeah, the setup's definitely nice here. You just chase people down, gives you extra take, chase potential, TP cancel. You can also maybe like Yule's the faceless void when he's trying to leap away and stun something after. It's global silence blast off has on the here. side. A lot of effort to kill Makoto, but they're going to get caught as they try and leave. Looks like the two supports are dead, but the core is going to be able to get away from 23, so. Valuable core kill to slow the game down, but a lot to give back Talon's way and a lot more space they're going to get on the map. Both supports dead, no chance the Skirmishing are fighting for 30 seconds here. It's time for the Talon course to go to work, and Q is just getting so much out of this game, man. He's been involved in 18 out of 19 kills. He's huge. This is a big cow, a bull. I like that you talked about how Q was very important for Talon's successful runs in the past because that goes back to what we were talking about with Makoto having to carry a lot of these games lately. It's probably because Q has had a little bit harder time finding his groove. But if he does, then that duo is what always carries Talon into the late game. They're their two biggest playmakers. Yeah. They're the tempo setters, the, the fast kill creators, the two players that are going to get on the enemy side of the map and create the opening. So if they're both having a bad game, that's why Talon just feels so damn slow. These games, Q has been really active in game two and three, and Makoto's had a better time in lane, so all of a sudden these games just naturally pick up a faster pace, and suddenly Talon don't seem so clunky of a team. Yeah. This is where they shine. That is a big piece of this team as a puzzle for them to figure out, is what are the heroes that make those two players work and how to play around them where they want to go. Something they will continue to build on as this year progresses, and high ground ward, my friend. Great, great kill. 750 gold for a two that completes the Yule Scepter and the Lotus Orb for jabs. It's a lot of items coming in now. And he was just low from tanking Ancients here, so. If he was full HP, maybe he survives, but he was not full HP. And that ward. That ward did him dirty. Charge on GPK top, does he know? Yeah, they're going to keep going for this. They're going to run after him. To inhibit? Inhibit slows Ooh. down, but if anything, that only delays the stun that's coming in and gives an opportunity for the rest of the team to get here, but the Rolling Thunder still goes off. The mine's going off as well everywhere. Looks like Save saves his core's life, but probably dies for it. Run him down. Hit him with the chains. Attempted for a staff save, but no. If you can get these spirits in deep in the fight too, that's another vision mechanism to get another charge off, to let the Morphling waveform in aggressively. Yep. So Ollie being preemptive with these in the fights is also gonna be really nice for this talent lineup as they just wanna see the supports for Bet Boom. You can find the silencer at the start, that's the dream, but you'll take the techies too, just gobble them up. And then even if you land these Dooms and Chronos, you might just be able to fight through it because your cores can pick up the slack of the other one getting disabled and just clean house. This ET Aura is going to be really nice, too, with amping up all the shell damage. Oh, yeah. Remember last time we saw Morphling versus Void? We got to see the Aghanim Scepter really put into effect on Morphling. Turning yeah, the into guaranteed the, bash. Yeah, the Time Walk bash. That was pretty cool. Glimmer Cape goes off for Ollie. He's going to try and duck away into the trees and TP out. Spotted last second by GPK. But the stuns come too late. Damn. What a smoke break, TP. These little things are what win you games. Yeah. Both the supports for Talon stepping up in these game two and three. Find time for 23 to hit his stride with that Aghanim's next. Still of ages for two and a half minutes here. 
I think you can force a fight with the Aegis. The Aegis prevents a lot of the all-in from the Doom and the Chrono, but you also don't want to get caught in a weird position where you clump into Bet Boom and set that up for them, because your lead is not crazy. Yes. I mean, uh, this is sure definitely still game farming. where I could see Talon getting advantage, but Bet Boom put together one team fight that gets them yes. fully back into the game. And that's where I go to the Talon supports. I think that's what their advantage is right now. It's Q's game and Ooh. his net worth. And this is how you want to start the fights, because then the core net worth doesn't matter as much. You just get a five on three or five on four, and your supports are still strong. The ET can cause a lot of chaos in the fight. You can disjoint some of the heroes. You have to pop BKBs pretty early on Bet Boom when you go to prevent that. That's actually a really nice combo. I'm realizing, like the you talked about the spirit giving vision, but also like the spirit breaker starts the fight for you, and if you clump up a little bit, it's like. Ollie is there to be able to provide the stomp to, to prevent any, you know, reciprocation. I mean, ET loves initiators in Dota. It's one of the best heroes to have behind heroes that just go in and have magic, single target, nuke damage. Spearbreaker is a great one. Morphling is another great one. You give the vision, he waveforms in, you adaptive strike on top of the spirit, like here. All that magic damage gets amped up. He is just gifting away kills here. Denied the Wisdom Rune. Hey, got something, but... Yeah, that's a seventh death for pure and a six on Toronto, Tokyo. That's a lot of kills that are just going onto the Bet Boom supports here. Yeah. And it's slowing down their item progression as well as buffing up the XP and gold talent are taking off the map. And they'll steal Tormentor to Q. Wow. Probably the one they would have taken here. Yeah. And it will help. Uh, we'll see. That's a good planar pocket game for the yeah. Doom. Especially, and there's nothing else really, right? That's why it's so damn good. Yeah, I think it's a Lincoln's for Makoto. See if he ever pulls that off. He is Surprise so well. blast off. Not low enough to get the kill though. Gotta be careful about clumping deep here. Yeah. Still of ages for 18 seconds, but that's timing out. And you know, Bet Boon of the timer, that'll be number eight for save. As the crack drags his corpse into the underworld. Hurricane and back. They already used the Rolling Thunder, so they're committed for the fight, but DK got himself stuck. He wants to die. He will yeah. get it. Morphed in full agility, so you could die, come back in. Oh. You, oh no, you. we got over the wall. Maybe they could save him, though. He turns into the, the uh, Faceless Void, gets him with the time walk stun, but Nightfall still, still gets off the Chronosphere, controlling up the Morphling. Oh no! No, he broke through the Doom, bounced back off the Lotus Orb, though. So he's going to be doomed himself. And yeah, that's an Ag's doom, by the way. Yeah. Cannot get anywhere near his team. Those are all the ults down for Bet Boom. This is just a Rax. This is such a huge window for Talon to get whatever they want on the map right now. The aggression forcing Bet Boom into an awkward decision making situation pays off huge. It's going to get you a lane. It's going to get you a lot more gold. And. Very nice use of the Aegis for 23. Just quickly morphing down to zero strength with the Agi to guarantee the pop. That was definitely the correct play. And the Faceless Void damage in the Chrono, I mean, it's pitiful. Absolutely pitiful here. Yes. Mjolnir helps a lot. He's probably looking for that level 20 talent as well. But that is three levels away here. And that is why you buy Midas on this hero. Midas pays off if you can get to the level 20 with the extra experience to ramp up the damage. That is what Nightfall's looking here. Is he going to have the time? Because I think Talon are just going to go down another lane. Like, you still have no ults here. Without the Doom, without the Chrono, I don't think you can take a fight. Whoa! Q, seriously, calm down, my man. Why? He's owning. He's a god. I Okay. His BKB is on cooldown now. A true bovine deity. What? What are you laughing at? I thought that was a good phrase. No, it was good. It was good. Oh, thank you. No, there was just some follow-up jokes there. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Not going to make. <laughs> well, at least they're having fun with the uh, aggression of Q. I mean, that's how you have to play Spear Breaker, man. If you pick Spear Breaker and you're not in the enemy base before 30 minutes, before 20 minutes, why are you picking this hero? Go pick some cowardly scumbag liner like a Oracle or a Crystal Maiden. Techies. Sit behind your cores. You know, this is a man's hero right here. Look at this. Q's just in again. Showing pure who's boss. You can BKB, but it don't matter, son. 
Earth Splitter. Oh. These kills, man, are worth so much gold, even though, you know, it's just not the biggest pickoff. It's not like they're down in net worth at all. They're up 8K, yeah, but, but that the kill is still worth over 1,000 gold. The Doom is worth a lot. And I think this should be how it is. Like, if you're going to play a hero like Doom that's just devouring and Midasine into Octarine with these super greedy, efficient gold items that are just disgusting and no one likes to see, then when you die with that, you should pay the price. I agree, actually. Yeah. You gotta pay the toll. Exactly. You can't just go might as Octarine and get away with it for free. You wanna ride the road to riches, you gotta pay the toll. That's right. If only our societies could do the same, might be in a better place. <laughs> There's some good old-fashioned morning socialism for you. <laughs> Not to get political, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I was going to touch religion earlier. Now you're touching politics. Hitting all the third rails right Wait, now. Wait, who touched religion? Nobody. 26 to 8, 10,000 net worth lead for Talon <laughs> as they are well set up to be able to take a second Roshan. That was a Scotty completed here for 23 Savage. He is... Really hitting a strong power point here. Bepboom do not have an answer to his tankiness, man. Radiant he sits on 40 seven. plus armor with 2500 HP. Are you cutting through that unless you can land a doom on him? You have to do it to the Lincolns. He might just ag steal your face before he can di time dilate you at the start. Q is up very far, but he does have buyback, of course. So even if he dies here, I think Talon are okay taking that type of fight. You just don't want to get caught in a huge clumped chronosphere. Lincoln's up for Makoto as well. Pure really has to think about these dooms between the two Lincolns and the planar pocket and the Lotus. Oh, the slight breaks the smoke. And Save will try and get some vision there inside of the pit. This is Bet Boom. This is the way they turn around the game or this is the way they get broken. And they are not getting the advantage out of this team fight that they hoped. Their ward is going to be killed. They still have a second one, though. Something that Talon may not expect. I mean, it shows you that Boom No, this is basically the fight for the game. Just yeah. commit all the vision. How do you get in here, though? I mean, is it just Nightfall jumping in? Toronto Tokyo is going to get stomped here. They're bringing a second smoke out. They will smoke up. I feel like all Talon has to do is wait this out. Hold the high ground. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Look at the base. It's getting destroyed by creeps right now. There are so they many. They are taking a tier four. Yeah, so just chill out. Around. They're actually giving up their high ground, which is really interesting. Yeah, that Stay blind jump. Blind blast off, but he tried that before. I think uh, Talon uh, uh. know exactly what you're thinking. It only works once, my friend. They're going to come back in through the position that Bet Boom was holding. Now there is mines to set it off, so they will know. The thing is, there's buybacks coming up for Talon here. Even if you get these big ulti kills, the Spear Breaker can come back, the Dark Seer can come back, the Ember can come back at 40 gold. Yeah. I feel like if you're Talon, you're pretty confident committing this fight with the buybacks on Radiant side. They're thinking about uh, blinking on him. They really want to catch Makoto yeah, here. This is, They're going to try for the chase line. stuff, but they didn't get him. They missed that one, and Q went in with his BKB, but his BKB lasting long enough that he can get back out. Now, huge initiation tonight. Global Sounds is going to go out. Right, the Ember Spear went for, for it. Breaker? A Chrono Spear onto the Breaker. That's it. That's not good enough. Yule Scepter. Let's see if Okoto gets Doom. Slight goes out into his Remnant. He's away. Pure searching desperately for a target of his Doom, and he gets it now onto the Morphling. But that's not good enough as Q comes back into play with a charge in. In the back line, it's going to be GPK controlled up. The last one to die in this fight. Even with the Doom, the other two heroes were just out of there for Bet Boom. Nightfall takes his breaker and bails. Says, good luck, boys. I'm not taking that fight. It gets the buyback out of Q, but that is not the chrono they were looking for. And that'll be Roshan for Talon with minimal commitment in terms of those buys. Thought maybe they're gonna have to use another one here, but just a very clean team fight for them. Waited out the smokes, got a kill on the obs. All these little things help. You get a better angle and you just jam it in. The second that Ooh. charge lands, it's very awkward because you don't want to use spells on the breaker, but he is forcing you to fight him in the corner. There's nowhere to run. He doesn't have buyback. If he dies here. I think the game's just over. Oh, the bashes. He's got a time walk, but he can't get it off. Oh, those bashes. No buyback. And now they're going to go even deeper. Q, he's not at home unless he's underneath the tier fours of the enemy base. 
Triple for 23 as he pushes his kill total up to 13. A lucky number. He will punish one failed team fight from Bet Boom, one failed Chrono, and all of that late game hope disappears in an instant. As both these games, that 30 minute mark, Talon turned it on, turned it up. Bet Boom just didn't have the answers. Maybe they just got too greedy. The Doom pick being punished. This is where the Doom is still weak, right? Yeah. He has BKB, he has Octarine Midas, but none of these items really do anything in, in a fight. They're about getting you to the late game refresher ags. Pure can't get there. He's just stuck with gold and nothing to do with it. The capitalism backfires. Makes me wonder what where Talon have been with this kind of play. I agree. Where have they been? They are looking like their old selves in this series for sure. Yeah, they didn't even look this way in the DPC. That's no. why they didn't make it. Not at all. They are actually going to respect here, despite the fact that 23 started off by hitting tier fours and almost took the second one. Yeah, there's some low buildings on the side. Low tier four, uh, last range racks. Yeah, which I believe means if the decision making was a little bit more crisp and, and all together, they would have actually gotten Megas, but... I agree. However, they still have Aegis for three, so 23, yeah. you're just going to man up here and you're going to have to deal with him or face the Mega Creeps. Nightfall realizes it. Chain stunning him. A little bit more. Keep that He'll ball rolling. They can't stop him. Not enough. So Mega Creeps now going to be inbound. Cure does get his initiation, but a Lotus Orb bounces back onto him. So again, does not feel confident. The Chronosphere can't kill 23, nor should it, because he still has the Aegis, and they're just going to call it. GG is called, and Bet Boom! Group Stage 2, Bet Boom can bleed. They will lose the series against Talon, who have been revitalized by this effort. I